Hi, and welcome back. I'm Jana, and we're working through the seven easy steps to getting started in mobile data collection using Kobo Toolbox. Now, this is a short course that you can take for free here on YouTube. It's also available absolutely for free on the Humanitarian Data Academy website. And if you want a certificate for working through this course, go over there, create an account, log in, uh, jump into the course, go through the same exact same videos as you would here on YouTube. Um, I'll be able to just see your progress. It will mark your progress. And then when you hit 100% progress through that course, you get a certificate that you can share. Um, and so if that's something that you want to do, head over there and do that right now. If not, let's keep going. In the series so far, we've gone through three steps, okay? First, we went through creating your Kobo Toolbox account, so your username and password, then installing the Kobo Collect app on your Android device, okay? And then in the last step, we set up the settings in Kobo Collect. Now, in this video, what we're gonna do is step four, which is creating your first questionnaire, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into your brand new Kobo Toolbox account. So you realize we have kind of Kobo Toolbox, which is uh, hosted on that server, and we have Kobo Collect, which is the app on your phone, okay? Both of those kind of work together, but they have different roles. When you're creating a brand new questionnaire, you wanna be in Kobo Toolbox um, on your browser. Now, uh, there's a big blue button, new, and that's the one we want to hit. Now, I'm gonna show you two ways to create a new project. Uh, one is to build from scratch, okay, here on Kobo Toolbox. The other one is to upload an XLS form. Now, the only way that if you've never used Kobo Toolbox before, you, you probably won't know how to create an XLS form, but you may have been sent one by someone else. They've sent you an XLS form, and you're like, well, how the heck do I look at this? So I'm gonna go over at the end of the video, how do you look at that? But for the majority of the video, we're just going to look through uh, build from scratch, okay? And we're gonna make a super simple um, form, but I'm gonna show you the five most commonly used um, question types, okay? So we're gonna make a name and we're gonna call it my first questionnaire. And you can enter a description if you want. I'm just gonna leave it blank. Um, I'm going to education and United Kingdom. Okay, so set uh, your sector and country, which are required for your project, okay? And then I'm gonna create the project. Now it's gonna take me into this form builder. Um, and it, it's pretty straightforward. You can see that there is this little blue button here that wants uh, that wants you to add a question, okay? So we're going to um, hit that blue button and we're gonna be able to create our first question. And the most common question type is just I wanna collect some text, right? So what is your name, okay? And I'm going to hit add question. Now this is simply a text question, okay? Which means they can enter anything they want, okay? So what is your name, text question. The next type of question that I wanna go through is a number question, okay? Uh, so let's say um, how many people are in your household? We're gonna add that question. And then we're going to tap number, okay? This is a number question, okay? So that means people will be able to enter a number there. Then we're gonna add another question. Now this type is going to be a date question, okay? What is your date of birth, okay? And when we add that question, you want to be looking here for a date, right? Then we want to add the next common question, uh, which is a select from uh, a list of, of options, okay? So that's a select one. And so that type of question would look like this. What is your displacement status? So if you are working in humanitarian uh, surveys, um, often you, you are you are working with families who've been displaced due to natural disasters or conflicts. So we're gonna add a question. It's gonna be select one, and maybe you're an internally displaced person. Maybe you're a refugee. Maybe you are uh, a host community or family household, or we can just put other, for example, okay? So that is uh, another really common question type. And I'm gonna add, then add one more question, okay, where we want to have options, but we want them to uh, be able to select multiple. So what's another common um, question when we say are in humanitarian settings? What are your household needs? Okay, for example. Now, if I add that question, 
we're going to not be selecting one, we're going to be selecting many. Okay, so there's a select many option. And let's say uh, we have some basic need options here. So water, uh, housing, or shelter. Uh, click to add another response. So you can make as many responses as you want. Food, or uh, maybe some health care. So whatever those options are. And then of course you can have an other option as well. Now, before we kind of save this and go out of it, I'm gonna show you one kind of cool thing you can do, okay? If they say other, okay? So what is your displacement status other? Maybe I wanna have a question to say, um, please explain further, okay? Which I want that to pop up when they say other. I'm gonna add this question and I want it to be a text question, okay? Um, I'm gonna drag this so it shows up after here. What is your displacement status? Please explain further. And um, I'm going to go into my little gear box there. And we wanna say skip logic, okay? Over here under settings. And we wanna say add a condition. Uh, what is your displacement status equals other. Okay, so when they answer other for displacement status, this question will show, but if they don't, this question will not show. Okay, and once you've added that, let's add one more skip logic question down here. What are your household needs? Um, please explain other household needs. Okay, add that question, and we want to make that a text. So open text question again, um, but we wanna hit that little settings gear button. Okay, uh, for that question, go to skip logic again, add a condition and make sure that this is now linked to what are your household needs and we want it to be equals and other. Okay, so when that equals other, then we want a pop-up question to appear to say, please explain further. All right, now I'm going to save this questionnaire so far. What I want you to do is Create this as I'm doing it, right? So practice those five question types. Try adding in a skip logic if you can. When you want to take a look at how it works and what it looks like, go up here to your left hand, a little eyeball in the left hand corner, and that will allow you to preview the form in your browser. So uh, what is your name? So this allows me to enter text. Great, how many people are in your household? It's just a number, right? So we, are, we can't enter text there, it's a number question. What's your date of birth? Great, I'm now allowed to enter uh, a date of birth um, or a date, that's your date question. What's your displacement status? I can only select one of these, okay? And you can see because we set up that skip logic question, when I put other, that question pops up. When I don't select other, it doesn't, okay? Perfect, great little trick in there for how do you get these working. Now, this one is a multiple select. I can choose many things. Um, I don't have to choose all of them. There's no restrictions there. And if I choose other, because we set up that skip, uh, skip, uh, skip logic, then we've got that final question popping up. So it's working exactly the way I want it to. Um, and I'm going to get out of here. One very quick quality assurance tip I would give you is that when you are collecting data, you can always choose this settings button for every question. And I would recommend that you tick mandatory response to yes for each question. If it is required that they enter data, always tip, uh, tick yes mandatory response. And we can do that for each one of our questions just to make sure that you don't have blank data that gets left out just because somebody didn't feel like answering that question, okay? So I'm gonna tick all of these to yes, okay? Even those skip logic questions, they if it pops up, it will force them to put in a response, okay? And that means you don't get, end up at the end of all of this with blank fields if you've got lots of people out collecting data, okay? Makes it a lot easier to analyze later on. So when you're done all of that, I want you to click save. Then you can hit that X at the top of uh, top right hand corner and it will take you back into this page. Now here, you need to take one final step and that is called deploy. So what I want you to do is hit deploy and you can actually see now it has pushed that draft form up into the server and guess what our next step is gonna be? We're connecting 
um, to that from our phone, but you now have that, okay? So now we have deployed the form. We have deployed that project on our server. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back here to projects. So this little icon over at the left is projects. And you can see first questionnaire and it is deployed, okay? It is able to be filled out. Data can now be submitted to that. That is one way to create a questionnaire from scratch. If you have been sent an XLS form from someone else, they've created a questionnaire and you're like, how do I see it, okay? What you can do is also hit that new button and say, upload an XLS form, okay? I'm just gonna grab um, an XLS form I have here, open that, it's gonna upload it, okay? And this is already in the format that's required for Kobo Toolbox to read it as a form. I'm going to then hit create project. And it takes us back to that same screen where we have a draft version there. It's got this yellow warning sign, it's not been deployed and I'm going to deploy it. Perfect, okay? Now, if there are any errors in that form that you've been sent, it will show red and you've got to do lots of troubleshooting. But again, I'm not gonna get into troubleshooting here just to keep this moving. And I want you to then be able to go back to your projects and you'll see that both your training XLS form for data entry and first questionnaire are now both deployed in your server. So that is how you create and set up your very first form in Kobo Toolbox. Go and practice that, get that done, get a form deployed, and then I'll meet you back here for our step number five. All right, see you there.